Hello students. Now we will continue our discussion and as we were talking about the conservation of the biodiversity, we are going to continue with that. Now uh, every country try to protect the flora and fauna. The government of all the countries or every country, each and every country because you know everyone wants the proper uh, habitat and the flora and the fauna and the environment in the country. So all the countries or we can say the government of all the countries uh, make certain laws, regulations, even you know certain policies are made so that the protection of the flora and fauna can take place properly. Uh, in fact the government also encourages people to do so. They try to even spread awareness you know by certain education uh, pro uh, programs, maybe certain uh, rallies and uh, maybe by sometimes by making strict laws and showing the consequences of breaking the laws. So all the governments they take steps and in fact you know certain protected areas are developed in the countries so that the wildlife can be protected. Now what is the meaning of protected areas and what are these protected areas? Uh, actually certain area is developed and here the flora and fauna uh, are you know are kept protected. Good care is taken of everything the numbers the of uh, feeding uh, the you know the uh, the how the uh, numbers are increasing or decreasing and all such kind of data are kept. So certain protected areas are developed in all the countries. Now what these protected areas are? Now national parks, centuries, biosphere reserves, national uh, or we can say the zoological uh, parks, the botanical gardens all these are the you know are protected areas and are and uh, all these uh, areas are just means to save wildlife because everyone knows that how important uh, for our existence you know even i will say in this way that for our existence it is very very necessary that all these things exist in the world so we will talk about certain protected areas of our country, we will talk about certain national parks, we will talk about centuries and biosphere reserves of our country. Now when we talk about all these things uh, or the protected areas, when we talk about all these areas, what is the difference and how, why the names are different when the, when the uh, aim is same to protect the wildlife then what is the difference there are certain minute differences between all these protected areas. So we will uh, just uh, have a you no know, glance a look on what all these are. So first of all we are going to talk about the protected areas. So When I say protected areas, what is the aim of all these protected areas? The aim of all these protected area is to save wildlife, is to save the habitat of the wildlife. The aim is to save the flora and fauna of the particular area. So what is the aim of the protected areas? To save flora and fauna is also to save the habitat because we all know we have discussed a lot about this that if habitat will not be protected, if habitat is not proper, if habitat is not facilitating then the animals will not be able to survive. So to save flora and fauna to save habitat with these aims many areas are made now what all these areas are so first of all we will talk about national parks Now 
now when we talk about national parks the aim of the national park is the uh, betterment of the wildlife what is the aim the aim of the national park is the uh, betterment of wildlife betterment of wildlife and you know all these areas are uh, developed with the help of the uh, different big organizations international organizations maybe wwf so uh, and the other organizations and you know all because this is not an easy task to develop such a big areas uh, now when we talk about national park children we have got almost i'm talking uh, approx we have got you know 97 national parks in india we have got 90, 97 national parks in india so to maintain all these national parks to uh, to save all the animals who all are uh, there to provide the facilities so all these things are done along with the foreign help along with the uh, big organizations so when we talk about india we have got 97 national parks i'm talking approx and all these is spread in the area of 38200 square kilometers we have got 97 national parks in india and it is spread among the area of 38200 square kilometer you know in the national parks no private uh, firm is allowed a uh, private partnership sort of a thing nothing that means if you want to purchase a particular part in national parks you can't you won't be able to do so if you want to go and you know uh, use certain uh, part even with the permission so you won't be able to do it so what is national park see when we'll be discussing all uh, these things in detail like national parks centuries and biosphere reserve then we will be able to understand that what all are the basic differences in all these uh, protected areas so for now we have uh, so many national parks and the private ownership is not allowed private ownership is not allowed private ownership is not allowed now in the national parks the grazing of the uh, animals you know or the uh, the cultivation forestry all these things are not uh, allowed so what is not allowed again the i'll just write the points over here cultivation grazing of the animals foresting that means the cutting off or the collecting uh, foreign uh, 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 not foreign forest collection of the forest materials maybe the fallen woods and all these things are not not at all allowed so collection of forest material is totally prohibited is totally prohibited so this is totally prohibited that means one cannot have the private ownership in the national parks uh, even if the richest fellow wants to purchase the area of the national park he won't be able to do so and even the people are not allowed that means a human interference is not there in the national parks one cannot collect the uh, you know woods or can cannot uh, cut the uh, uh, timber and all the all these uh, things so that means human interference is not allowed and thus the flora and fauna both are protected so human interference is not allowed human interference 
is not there is not there and that is the reason both flora and fauna are protected and so both flora and fauna are protected so that is the reason both the uh, like when we talk about the plants and the animals both are protected equally now so i'll just give you few examples of the very famous national parks of india so first of all i can write here uh, jim corbett national park jim corbett national park now we all have uh, you know uh, read or uh, somewhere about at least some points we know about the all these uh, parks uh, because as we all know that we are discussing about this the conservation of biodiversity of eighth standard so till uh, when we reach uh, one one student reaches in eighth standard till that time you know one is quite aware of all these uh, parks and have at least a little idea about all these national parks so i'm talking about the jim corbett national park which is in uttarakhand uh now i can write about the kahana national park kahana national park and this is in madhya pradesh now there are many national parks actually but i cannot write i do not have so many uh, like uh, so much of uh, place over here but still uh, one more i will write uh, i can write simli pal so it can be it can be like uh, i think it is quite visible so this one is simli pal national park in odisha now other than this uh, palmau national park is also there are many national parks are there in india now there is a big list of national parks in india so uh, first of all we'll concentrate on only two i have written over here two three so what we are talking about we are talking about the protected areas all the governments of the different countries want to save their flora and fauna and for that reason they develop certain protected areas now why these are known as protected areas because human interference is not allowed because uh, no actually when we talk about the different places you will see that in some places certain part uh, can you know uh, can have the human interference but basically the humans are not allowed to interfere first of all we are talking about national parks and the uh, main aim is the betterment of the wildlife both flora and fauna are protected over here we have got 97 national parks and which is spread among the area of 38200 kilometers square kilometers now along with this the uh, i would just like to mention this point that cultivation grazing collection of forest material is totally prohibited and i have written few names jim corbett national park kana national park simli pal national park so these are the few national parks which i have written over here now we will talk about the centuries so we'll just have a look upon the centuries now when we talk about the centuries the main aim of the century is to protect the wild animals so it is for the protection of wild animals
uh, it's not a, a that the flora is not uh, protected even the plants are protected but the one difference between the national park and century is this uh, that in the centuries uh, as I told in the national parks the private ownership is not allowed I have written wrong spelling over here sometimes while writing you know uh, I don't know some words get skipped so it is private ownership is not allowed I have written over here that private that one cannot go and purchase the land where one cannot go and have you know and the other thing which I have written over there is human interference is not there grazing is not allowed you cannot like one cannot go and cut the uh, forest you know the wood the trees from there but when we talk about century children uh, in certain uh, part with the legal permission you know with the legal permission uh, for certain firms it is allowed to collect timber to uh, you know to uh, take away the timbers uh, timber uh, so that is the thing that this is the main difference between the national parks and the century so uh, from first of all the protection of wild animals that means it is uh, basically for the protection of the wild animals now when we talk more about the centuries the uh, the main thing which I am saying is that from certain part from certain area the timber cutting is allowed for few farms so this is the basic difference that we are actually here also one cannot go and purchase area that is for sure nowhere can go and uh, purchase areas when we talk about these protected areas but along with this when we talk about that um, how the how much can we go and you know uh, can can the can one uh, go and take the cattle inside the, these areas and all this when we talk about so here the timber can be collected the certain area is decided and very important thing while collecting such uh, areas you know where the people certain firm people are allowed there also strict laws are there that the wildlife should not be harmed in any of the in any case so this is very strict instructions and laws are there that timber and certain things are allowed to collect from that particular area but still the wildlife should not be harmed so this cutting of plants from certain area should not affect the wildlife it should not be on the cost of the wildlife so this is very important point that national parks one cannot enter only enter in the sense for grazing purpose for cultivation for foresting one cannot go uh, definitely part the private partnership cannot be there ownership cannot be there but when we talk about centuries in certain part the you know uh, uh, the uh, certain firms can go and collect certain uh, uh, timber and all this so uh, this is how uh, like you know one can make a difference between the centuries and the national park now when we talk about national park we have got 97 national park and when we talk about the centuries we have got around 508 centuries 508 centuries are present in India and these areas are very you know very uh, like uh, vast this is not that a very small ground is taken and the century is created or the national parks are developed no it's, it's a huge area with uh, which uh, where it is very very essential to provide the uh, you know, f the all the like you know the uh, water and food and all care has to be taken it is natural environment obviously natural environment so uh, the question will come in your mind that how the care can be taken but uh, you know the water is there available or not and all such kind of things uh, is taken care of 
so this is about the centuries we have got 508 centuries and i will just write a few of them over here so Uh, first of all, I am writing over here Bharat, Bharatpur uh, bird century. Now, this Bharatpur bird century is in Rajasthan. Now, the second I can write over here is Kaziranga. And this Kaziranga is in Assam. Now, Sultanpur, Lake, Bird, Century, and this is in Haryana. Now, uh, Periyar and I am writing short forms and there are so many. Mm, there is no use of writing all the names on the uh, board over here. Just written over there I have written 3 because I was not having place. Here I will write 4. So, Periyar and this one is in Kerala. So, these are few important centuries uh, of India. Now, we will talk about the biosphere reserve. Now, this one was a second protected area and this one is our first protected area. So, now we will be discussing about the third protected area and here I am talking about biosphere reserves. Now, when we talk about biosphere reserves, you know, biosphere reserve is a very, very huge area. It is very vast. Biosphere reserve is a much, much bigger than the national parks or from the centuries, from the botanical gardens, from the zoological parks or the zoos. Now, these uh, biosphere uh, reserves actually when we talk about India especially, so we have got 18 uh, in India. We have got 18 biosphere reserves in India. Now, you know this biosphere reserve is divided into three parts. It is divided into three parts. Now, first is core area that means uh, the main area. Now, here the legal laws or uh, you know uh, great uh, you know the human interference is not at all allowed and great uh, care is being taken that no one can interfere here. Actually, you know the see may national parks no one can interfere can uh, can go and uh, collect anything. When we talk about centuries, certain part is allowed uh, decided uh, and there no one can go and one means definitely the forms and the along with all the legal documentation, paperwork, permission and uh, lot many things are there, the uh, contracts are there and all this thing is there. So, uh, uh, along with that one can the firm can interfere, can go and can uh, have certain types of goods from there. When we talk about biosphere reserves, you know the, here the wildlife is also protected. That means, the flora and fauna both are protected along with that the tribals or the people who live along uh, or nearby the uh, this uh, biosphere reserves there they are all they are allowed to certain part and to uh, fulfill their daily needs from the forest this is the biggest uh, difference and this is uh, you know the important point about the biosphere reserve i won't be discussing this thing in much detail because definitely you do not have all this in detail in your course. 
so just giving an idea that biosphere reserves actually can be divided into three parts the main the center area the core area then the buffer area and the transition area now this transition area can be known as known by certain other names also because in all different different books this transition area is uh, you know named by certain other names so uh, basically we have got three zones over here first one is the core zone which is in the center and here all the laws and regulations are very very strict no one can go in that particular area it is a highly protected area now when we talk about the other two now uh, again certain uh, differences are there but here the main thing is that the tribes or the people who live near the centuries uh, sorry biosphere reserve they can uh, go inside certain limited part and can complete or can you know take the things from there that means laws are made in such a way that in particular area the tribals or the nearby people can come and can take or whatever you know the uh, can complete the daily need so the biosphere reserves has got these three areas and we have got 18 uh, biosphere reserves in india first uh, when we talk about the areas the first area is the innermost is core then buffer and the transition area now uh, i'll just write the name of the few centuries again i do not have much place over here to write uh, here one more point i will just want to add is from certain areas of biosphere reserve the tribes and nearby people can complete their day to day requirement so this is how the in few certain limited part the tribes can interfere interfere in the sense they can go and they can even collect the woods and you know can uh, fall certain trees and something like that now i'll just write the few names uh, like nilgiri biosphere reserve nalanda devi biosphere reserve and sundarban biosphere reserve now i have written three over here also so we have nilgiri biosphere reserve nalanda the uh, nalanda devi uh, biosphere reserve and uh, sundar uh, sundarban uh, biosphere reserve so here i have written certain names of the biosphere reserve and uh, this is how the the wildlife is protected now we have to mention two more we have to talk about the botanical gardens and we also have to talk about the zoo now uh, this was just a small introduction of biosphere reserves and centuries and national parks now we'll, because detailing is not there in the syllabus and so even i have not detailed all these uh, just uh, a glance if we talk about in a in a just way 
so national parks it is the wildlife it is for the betterment of uh, wildlife the habitat is uh, protected and human interference is not at all there one cannot uh, like the private and ownership is not allowed we have got 97 national parks and a uh, few names i have written over there centuries if we talk about the in centuries in few particular part the timber can be collected the woods can be collected without harming the wildlife i have written again certain names like bharatpur bird century kaziranga sultanpur lake bird century periyar now biosphere reserves can be divided into three parts the core buffer and transition and uh, the tribals and the nearby people can go to a certain extent uh, in their reserves and can fulfill their needs so this is how, how the three uh, protected areas are different and plays very important role now we will discuss about the botanical gardens and the zoos so please uh, note this so that we can discuss the next